you very much, everyone. I was asked to come here and speak today um, to talk a little bit about an alternate career in healthcare. Um, even though I work in, in health technology and, and founded uh, DoseMe, which is a, a local Brisbane company, um, I still tend to think of doctors, nurses, and pharmacists when I think of a potential career in healthcare. But healthcare is a, is a team game, and there are so many more types of people involved. So I'm going to give a little bit of an overview about what we do at DoseMe, how we build it, built our team and got to where we are, and uh, you know what we look for in people when we hire them. Um, and so specifically, when it comes to an alternate career in healthcare, computer science plus X, you might have heard the, the term before. Um, you know, what uh, future business founders uh, should think about if they're thinking of starting their own business in health tech or anything else. And then finally, job readiness for a, a career such as this. Um, but before I start, I'm just going to play a short 90 second video that gives you a little bit of an overview of what dose means uh, about and what it is that we do. People respond to medication the same way. Dose too high and risk adverse effects. Dose too low and risk no therapeutic benefit. Over 2 million serious adverse drug responses will occur in hospitals this year, but over 75% can be prevented with better dosing. Enter DoseMe RX, the revolutionary precision dosing software, designed and tested for clinical use. DoseMe RX accurately individualizes a dose for each person. How? Using clinically validated data to digitally construct a virtual model of your patient. This model is based on individual characteristics, laboratory results, and in some cases, genotype. Then, algorithms calculate the precise dose needed to reach your desired therapeutic target. Dose RX's algorithms also simulate the outcomes of different dosing regimens, allowing you to see them before administering to your patient. With the ability to visualize your patient's response to therapy, you'll be able to better adapt treatment, reduce adverse events, and improve clinical outcomes. Tried and tested in the United States and around the world, Dose RX can be up and running on any internet-enabled device within minutes or integrated seamlessly into your EHR. Easy to use, simple to teach, effortless setup. <coughs> to see Dose RX in action, click Book a Demo Now. Okay, so you probably don't want to book a demo because that's not really the point of showing you the overview today. Um, but the, the idea is to to show you what it is that we do. So we have software used by more than 100 or, by more than 100 hospitals and clinics around the world used to individualize the medication therapy for patients and make sure that they get the dose that's high enough to be effective and not too high that it's toxic. And this requires a lot of computer science, it requires maths, and it also requires an understanding of healthcare. And some of the hospitals that we have include Texas Children's, uh, Houston Methodist, which are both uh, absolutely enormous hospitals. Uh, in Australia, we have hospitals in Victoria, New South Wales, and Western Australia. Um, and we partner with a range of electronic healthcare record companies. So Queensland is in the process of rolling out Cerna. So rather than a paper chart, uh, every piece of information about a patient in a Queensland health hospital will be recorded into Cerna instead. And so we partner with these organisations that help deliver it. But the key point for today is that healthcare has many parts. Dosing is really complicated. And if you think of uh, something as simple as getting the right dose of a medication prescribed to you in hospital, there's going to be many different people involved in that process. There's physicians who decide that this is the right treatment for you to be on. There's pharmacists who then check what the physician has prescribed and potentially then adjust the dose or recommend changing to a different drug. There's phlebotomists who come and draw your blood and make sure that yes, in fact, that dose uh, is appropriate. They'll check how much of that drug you have in your bloodstream. Uh, there's nurses who are involved in so many different aspects of patient care. Pathologists will check the results that get drawn from your blood. There's scientists who make sure that the lab is working correctly when your blood is drawn. And then there's the IT guys who make sure that the whole thing works seamlessly end to end and is connected and that your lab result is associated with you as a person and is available for the doctors, pharmacists and nursing staff to see and review. 
And the point that I'm making here is that a team with a diverse background and a diverse set of core skills is really critical. And when it comes to developing software for IT, as a company, we need to have the same type of breakup. We need a diverse set of staff with a diverse set of backgrounds. We all need to be united in building dosing software, but you really do need to have that, uh, those multiple skill sets. And so when I have a look at our team, um, we've currently got about 15 staff. Um, these are some of our, uh, I guess, earlier staff. On the left-hand side, we have our commercial team, so our, our CEO, Charles, um, Nikki Dallin and Andre, who you know, help us make our company a success um, from a business perspective. And in the middle, we have the technical part of our team. And the, the, the part that I want to make really clear is that when we look at the skills and backgrounds of our technical team, four out of five of us have a background in something other than just computer science or information technology. Um, my background is bioinformatics research. Uh, Liz's background is neuroscience. Uh, Paul is both a psychologist and has a master's of statistics. Um, and Holly is one subject short of a nursing degree at this point in time, as well as having a really, really deep background in, uh, in, in processes and customer support and ensuring that you support customers in the best way you can. And so that's one of the things that I really want to uh, touch on today, and that's computer science plus X. Uh, computer science is a great skill set to have uh, by itself, and when I kind of explain how I got to where I am today in a moment, you'll see that that's where I started. Um, but as I said, four-fifths of our technical team have another skill as well. And it's not just our technical team, although that's who I gave as an example today, it's our business team as well. Um, Dallin, who's head of sales for Australia, has has a background in pharmacology. Um, you know, these are not uh, these are not people who solely do sales or solely do IT. And we're actually in the process of headhunting another uh, member of our technical team, and they have the same background. They have a background in computer science, plus in their case, a uh, nursing degree and years of experience. Now. I'm not saying that everybody should go and do a nursing degree uh, or a pharmacy degree or medicine, uh, but what I am saying is that if you've got that business domain expertise as well as a computer science background, that really accelerates and opens up the number of job possibilities you have because no longer are you just working in software development or just working in sales. You're understanding the business and its goals and objectives in a much wider way. So, entrepreneurship, uh, it's a very hot topic, of course. Everybody uh, sees it as a, as a very attractive thing to do, and, and for good reason. Um, Michaela asked that I touch on a few of the things that I think, you know, when you're looking at potential students who may wish to pursue, entre pursue starting their own business, becoming an entrepreneur, although that is a slightly loaded term, I guess, um, you know, what are you looking at, what are the type of people who we see doing this. And I think the key thing is to be interested. Um, not in money, um, money is of course very important, it makes the, the world go round, uh, so to speak, but be interested in the problem that you're solving. And it's really important to not just be in that one single skill set, so to have something else other than just your computer science. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute by taking you through a little bit of the history of dosing itself. Secondly, um, if you're easily discouraged, then maybe you should be. And this is a slightly cheeky way of looking at it. But nobody becomes uh, a millionaire or a billionaire with a unicorn overnight. Um, the average length of time to sell a startup is about 10 years. Um, it's a really long road. And odds are it's not going to be pleasant the entire length of time. You know, you're going to have your tough spots. You're going to have great successes. Um, signing your first deal, fantastic moment. Um, you know, you're actually validating your product uh, has an appropriate market fit. But at the same time, you're going to get knockbacks as well. So if you're easily discouraged, then perhaps it's not the right uh, type of career. And I guess that goes into the next point, which is you get a huge amount of freedom. And if you've got someone who really values the freedom to solve a problem that's a problem for them or that they can identify 
or who wants to have an impact for themselves, then it's an excellent, uh, it really is an excellent career path. Um, and with that, you need to have flexibility. Um, it's not just freedom to do what you think is great, but it's also the flexibility to roll with the punches that you get while you figure out how is my product or how is my company actually serving the market. But you do need a little bit of stubbornness as well, because not every bit of resistance you'll get is well-founded. Finally, you should probably want to do something new. Um, there's nothing wrong with starting another business that's replicating what you want, but in that kind of, I guess, somewhat cliched startup space, you always think of something that's new. And if it's not a new product, it might be a new approach to the market, or it might be a new approach of how you're doing business. So if you've got somebody who's got that a little bit of creativity in terms of how they look at solving something, then maybe it's a good fit. And finally, a little bit of madness helps, but uh, more on that one later. So to give you an idea about my background, um, in high school, I ended up, I was in New South Wales with the equivalent of no B4. So not a terrible student, but I certainly uh, preferred to spend my time doing things other than studying every day. Um, and I had a, quite a varied set of subjects, so French and science, computer science, but not just that, sport, debating, everything else. That was kind of what I focused my time on, and having this bizarre list of interests, I think really helps, because when you're running your own company, you need to be a jack of all trades. Um, and the, the quote, jack of all trades, master of none, the final part that everybody leaves out is, but oft times better than master of one. So, it really is important to actually have a, a broad background. Doesn't mean that you need to be expert, and in fact you shouldn't. Your staff should be better at you for everything that you've hired them for, right? If you're hiring somebody who's not better than you, they're probably the wrong hire, but having a broad background really helps. I then went to university and did science IT. Um, so that was a dual degree, not all universities offer them. You will know far more about that than, than I will. But it was kind of, uh, it was kind of uh, getting a bit of interesting variety. So for myself, that fit in with my somewhat uh, unstructured, broad approach to trying to do everything. I then went and worked in IT for about three years. Um, IT was great. Um, you know, for a uni student who hasn't been paid for years, starting salaries are fantastic, uh, conditions are great. Um, it's generally interesting work, but after a while, it did become to be the same old story day to day. And the reason it became the same old story day to day was I was predominantly working on accounting software. Now, as I said, money's important, but for me, accounting software is not a passion of mine. Um, uh, hats, you know, hats off to accountants, but um, not for me. Uh, after that, I then returned to the University of Queensland and did a PhD in bioinformatics. So bioinformatics is kind of working with large amounts of biological data, typically genetic, in order to understand uh, what's going on. And in my case, we were looking at a particular type of, of, of uh, brain tumour. Then in 2014, I both started a medical degree, which I dropped out of, but I'm happy to take questions about that decision later, and founded Dose Me at the same time. Um, so we are now in 2018, which is about, we're about six and a half years later because I started that in about January. Um, so that gives you some idea of the typical length of time. And we're not done yet either. Um, in 2014, we first sought funding for Dose Me. So for those uh, counting along, that's basically two years of no salary other than contract work on the side. Now you can make it, uh, you know, you can make it happen, but that you do need to have that little bit of madness to step out and say, you know what, I'm willing to not draw a salary for uh, a period of time until I get my idea, which you have to believe in quite strongly, up and running. Don't get me wrong, it was a great decision to make, but when it comes to selecting a person for entrepreneurship, it's kind of a bit like that. So giving you a little bit more of the timeline in terms of sticking it out and rolling with some of the uh, challenges along the way, this may be a little bit too small, but I've been led to believe that you're going to have access to slides later, so um, apologies for those up at the back of the room. But in 2012, I had the idea. This, this slide wasn't done by myself. Um, for some reason, in all of our slides, the like uh, founder technology person always has a beard. Uh, 
And then we, by you know, mid-2013, late 2013, we had a proof of concept. Right, so that's quite a long time to go from nothing to, to proof of concept. Um, it was a great time, I absolutely loved it. Um, I got to work at home with the dog by my side most of the time and in coffee shops and nowadays you have places like Fish Burners and River City Labs which uh, you know, would have been much, much better. But it took a while. Um, in 2014 we had seed funding and then around about the middle of 2014 we were approved as a medical device. Now, we're software only, so we're simply a software tool that interprets laboratory results and makes a recommendation. But in Australia and Europe, software that has that type of impact on a patient is regulated as a medical device. Um, we then got a pilot site up towards the end of 2014. So St Vincent's Hospital Sydney um, was our Australian pilot site, and I'm pleased to say that they're still a customer today. Um, we then brought in a CEO. So, one of the things is realising where you have gaps. For me, it's, it is the, the business side uh, of the business. I'm definitely a product person, and Charles joined us. 2016, okay, so now we're at four years after the idea came about, we have our first paying customer. Now, that's a long time to go before getting a paying customer. And this is one point where health is likely to be different to everywhere else. Because it's regulated, you need to have that patience. We then got a seed funding round and worked our way through to a US office opening in 2017. And at this point, it, it accelerated. Uh, our first US customers signing agreements with large partners uh, and being available inside EMRs. Uh, at the end of last year, we hit the 5,000 patients dose mark. So um, that's a, a long time since starting. And the product went from this. I, I have no graphical design skills, as is apparent on the left. Um, to today being supported across multiple devices. And so that brings me to the other point about an entrepreneur. It was a long journey and you need to stick it out. But you also need to do something new. But don't think it needs to be something brand new. You don't need to invent a, a flying car. right? It doesn't need to be something that's not in the market today. It needs to be something that's not necessarily done well. And there's paper after paper in our case of where Precision medicine, the need and the requirement for it is recognised, but nobody had yet pulled it together in a usable software form. And so that's the thing. It's something new in terms of the clinical demand and the clinical use, not necessarily a brand new product. And finally, a little bit of madness. I'm unsure how many of you saw this about two weeks ago, but apparently uh, toxoplasma uh, infection is linked with entrepreneurial behaviour. <laughs> The interesting thing about uh, that particular parasite is that it increases your appetite to take risks. So certainly when you, if you're thinking of students who an entrepreneurial career might be for them, then a little bit of calculated risk-taking behaviour is probably going to be a good thing. And the final thing that I wanted to touch on before wrapping up today is that often we get a picture like this displayed. We're doing a startup or having a traditional career path is seen as a fork in the road, and you do one or the other. Ultimately, if your startup's successful, you should have something like a career path anyway, one would hope. Um, but if it's not, that doesn't matter either. Of the staff that we have in our company, a large number of them have been involved in different startups before, and in fact, some of our staff have moved on to other startups over the years. And some of them have moved in and out over their careers from startup to traditional businesses. Our CEO has worked for both startups and KPMG, and two more different styles of business could not be found. So it's not painting yourself into one box or the other for your whole career. Um, it's something that's worthwhile considering, uh, but can easily be, um, but as times change, it's not something that you're locked into for life. So finally, in terms of future job readiness, I don't think it's computer science plus X or X plus computer science. It's X plus Y where X is a technical skill. So technical skills are the multiplier for how we get things done. They also let us understand and communicate with the rest of our team. Because today, any team in any business is going to be a mix of technical people as well as product or domain area specialists. And that's really what I'd like to encourage you uh, to take as a message from this. It's that 
Yes, you should have your core skill, but don't just do one thing. Be multi-skilled. Do your core skill well, but have your other skills as well to be a really effective member of a team. Um, academic achievement is important, but it's only step one. Um, so long as you can get into that degree, you've ticked the box for your academic achievement. You need to focus on doing your job well rather than necessarily the grades, the, achieving the grades. Finally, advisors, mentors and networks. I've got one job in my life ever by applying to an ad. Ever. And I've done quite a few consultancy jobs over the years. Every other one has been through networks or being invited to apply by a friend who worked there. And that really is, uh, is often um, not given the importance that it is. And finally, it doesn't matter if we don't work it out. I still haven't worked it out. When friends uh, say to their kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm sitting there thinking, well, gee, I wish I knew that myself. <laughs> uh, we have plenty of time to figure it out. And by doing your own business, that gives you an opportunity to really figure it out yourself. Um, but who knows where we'll be in 20 years. Hopefully, Dosman will be exceptionally successful and will be in every hospital around the world. But we don't know that yet. So realising that if you're not enjoying the journey rather than the destination, odds are it's not the right career path for that person. So thank you very much for listening to me today.